evening everyone yeah today's session will be start by myself it's a uh, pride for me to welcome you to this lecture series especially for today's one this is the 14th one for the session and the continuation of the previous lecture and the third of it let me welcome our esteemed professor professor tishan jai singh for this lecture today and welcome you professor Oh, thank Jaisinga you for the lecture. Yeah, I welcome all the participants joining here this evening. Now, my instigating not won't be much new to you. And what I could say as actually for you all to join until Professor shares his knowledge with this mere interest of the civil engineers to enhance your knowledge. Dear participants, you are much more fortunate to join this lecture on structural design of precast. Beam slab systems and be patient and we'll be handing over the plat platform soon. Thank you, Professor, for your great contribution towards Thank the leadership of the ISL. You are a unique person doing so, and I appreciate it. On behalf of the Chairman Civil Engineering Sectional Committee, Engineer Mangala Silva, I welcome you once again to the lecture and hope you will abstract very fruitful stuff with more take home loads. From this lecture as well. Another okay, announcement I think Man Banduka is uh, joined, but I think he has his personal matters to attend and he'll be joining a bit late. Without further ado, I invite Professor Tishan Jaisinger to take over the platform. Thank you, Professor, and thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, now last time I took some examples, uh, real examples, to highlight uh, you know, how we design the system in a practical application. So I took a house. Today I'll draw only part of it uh, where we have a large garage and then I said we can have some space, a room, a washroom, a living area, and a staircase. So basically, now we can see the situation. Now let's say we are going to have the beam this way, the panels this way. So this space, we might decide, okay, we are going to have the beam this way and panels this way. Now you might ask why I select two different directions. So if this is 4 meters, then this will become 2 meters. If I, select the, I have selected the beam this way because the width is 4 meters. If this is 4 meters, I can make the panels 2 meters. So I can select the beam this way provided that there is a there's a supporting beam to transfer the load. Now, the moment we need a supporting beam, we need a column, L-shaped column at the corners. So we need L-shaped column. And uh, in this case, uh, we need an L-shaped column if there's a large opening. So it's a large opening. It's a window, large window. We need a uh, L-shaped column. But here we don't need it. Here there's no specific reason to have one because uh, the washroom traps also can span this way. So there's no specific reason to have a corner column at this place. And uh, there will be a fan light. And there's no specific reason to have a L-shaped column here also because this is the staff. But here we'll need one because uh, we are going to have a large opening. Large opening to have the two cars parked. So that means this, this is going to be something like 6 meters by 6 meters. Now if you go with a traditional solid slab, 
if you have 6 meters by 6 meters, the minimum thickness needed may be about 162, 170 millimeters. So you might use uh, something, if I talk in the traditional terms, you might use 6.5 inch slab. Uh, because 6 inch slab might not be able to uh, uh, curse, satisfy the deflection requirement without providing a lot of extra reinforcement. So you might go for uh, 100, six and a half inch slab or 660 to 170 millimeter slab. <clears throat> now, instead of that, in this particular case, we can have two beams like this. We can have two beams like that. And then we can arrange the slab panels this way. So let's see how to handle the beam design part. So here we have a beam spanning about say, let's say 4.5 meters. And then uh, in a small bedroom, it might be only 3.5 meters. It can be 4.5 meters in a large bedroom. In a living room or a garage, it can be. So we can we'll see what the type of reinforcement requirement that will arise in uh, three different situations. So now we are today we are going to learn how to design the beam. So for that, I will select first 3.5 meter span. So it's a situation similar to this one, but the span is only 3.5 meters. Span is only 3.5 meters. Span is only 3.5 meters. So I have to see. Now, if the span is 3.5 meters, generally we use a size of 200 by 175. Now you might ask why we use 175. Uh, we like this beam to be as small as possible. But at the same time, we like to place the slab panels like this. The thickness of the slab panel is 45 millimeters. And we like to have a bearing of about 50 millimeters. So this is civil engineering section of committee picture 14. Page one on thirteenth March twenty twenty four. So, so we like it to be like this, where we have uh, the beam resting support in the slabs, three car slabs. So why we select a 45 millimeter thickness is we want to keep the weight of the slab as low as possible so that uh, you know two, two or three people can easily lift it. So minimum two would be needed but uh, if there are three people then they can easily lift the panel and place it or if there is a crane or a boom truck then you can use that also for lifting. So now let's see the situation. We have a beam. We have a bearing of 50. Bearing of 50. This is 175. So that will give a gap of bearing maximum of 50. So it can be 40 to 50 millimeters. Because the bearing is small, we make sure when we cast, the reinforcement comes to the very end of it. We don't keep a space. We don't keep any cover because this uh, reinforcement will be covered by concrete later. So we don't keep any cover because we want to make sure the connection occurs through a reinforcement. So basically a reinforcement should be resting on <coughs> concrete. Then we have the final thickness 
that's another 45 milliliters, giving a total of 90. The total of 90. And uh, now we are going to place a red link like this. And we'll have another reinforcement like that. It's an 8 millimeter bar uh, supporting two 8 millimeter bars. Now you can see the purpose of it. Uh, this arrangement will make sure we have 8 millimeter bar with a cover of 20 millimeters. Here also we can use a cover of 20 millimeters. And then the reinforcement in the precast panel comes to comes here. So you can see the precast panel is not supported only by concrete, it's supported by a reinforcement as well. So that's why we place that particular reinforcement. Uh, is that clear? We place that particular reinforcement because of that reason. Then we have to see what are the other arrangements. Now we have we want to lock it. So we'll have a reinforcement, and you know when when you are casting the panels, generally if you are lifting by lifting manually, we cast it to 300 millimeter width. And we get a shape like this. Here we will have 15 millimeters by 10 to 15 millimeter group. So here we have a group. So we can place this reinforcement here. So there will be a reinforcement running below this reinforcement. And uh, that is running on the group. That runs on the group. Generally, when you are placing, we place this reinforcement deliberately on this side. We don't place it on the joint because uh, joint. If you place it on the joint, we don't have enough power. So they deliberately place it on the side. So these are all cut pieces. So this can be eight millimeter uh, reinforcement, eight millimeter. Then. Then we also need to make sure this behaves as a continuous slab. So, so we have this reinforcement going up to 0.3 L or 600 millimeters. On this side also we have another 600 millimeters. So that is the arrangement. So if you look, if I draw it again without the reinforcement, then what you see is a slab, a beam of 175 by 200. And then you get 45 millimeters of concrete. Then you get another 45 millimeters of concrete come in there. And they are all connected, linked, which means all this concrete can now act as one beam. So what you are designing will be a flange beam. Like that. What we design will be a flange beam like this. And uh, this simply supported. And uh, we are having beams at two meter interval. meet interval. So what the Eurocode says is take 20% of this and take 10% of span. So if the span is 3.5 meters, the beam is simply supported. So 10% of that is 350 millimeters on one side. 350 millimeters on one side. 350 millimeters on one side. And then 20% of this is 400 millimeters on one side. 
but it also says it cannot be more than 20% of span. 20% of span is 700 millimeters. So, this, the addition of these two is 750 millimeters. 20% of these 700 millimeters. So, you get 700 on one side, 700 on the other side, but if you take the spacing, because it's uh, the actual spacing is one meter on this side, one meter on this side, but uh, we get this. So the flange width is 750, 700 plus 700 plus 175. So you get a flange width of something like 1575. Is that clear? So the Eurocode guideline is <clears throat> when you want to calculate when something is behaving as a flange beam, uh, if it is a continuous beam, then it says you get a bending moment diagram like this. Then you get beams at 2 meter interval. So it says on one side, take 20% of 2 meter. So that is 400 millimeter. Then it says take 70% of 10% uh, of distance between point of inflection. That is 0.7 times A. So that is the rule given in Europe. Right. And it gives a higher value than what the British code used to give. But in our case, this simply support. So, having a span of 3.5 meters. So, we have to take 10% of 3,500. So, it comes to 350. 20% uh, of 2,000. That comes to 400 millimeters. Addition is 750. But the euro code says... The maximum is 20% of distance between point of in zero moments so the distance between points of zero moments is 2500 into 0.2 is 700 so you can see the flange with this flange with this has to be 700 on one side so 700 on this side 700 on this side 175 in between so you get 1575 millimeters so it's a fairly wide flange it's a wide flange so you can see because we locked everything the street concrete can become the flange. Street concrete can become the flange. Because we lock him. It's not, we are not relying on the bond. We are relying on the reinforcement and we lock him. So the situation is we have a beam of 3,500 millimeters length. And it's a flange beam. Of 45 millimeter flange and a beam rib of 175, depth of 290 millimeters, and a cover of 20 millimeters. Effective depth of 290 minus 20 minus, let's say we are using 12 millimeter bars, 10 millimeter bars, we we'll just assume, uh, say 12 millimeter bars. Before that, we use a link, we use a link of 8 minus 12 divided by 2. So that comes to 270, 260, 250, 
six fifty eight millimeters two fifty six millimeters. It comes to two hundred fifty six millimeters. It comes to two hundred fifty six millimeters. Right. So twenty eight thirty two thirty two. So it comes to uh, two fifty eight millimeters. Two fifty eight. So you can see it's a flange beam of depth 290 and a width of uh, 1575 millimeter flange. So if you want to find the reinforcement, we can find, find it if you know the load. Now let's see what is the load. What is the load? And uh, generally, when you cast this, we generally provide about two supports for the beam, two or three supports. So generally, we provide few supports to the beam, like that. Because beam is carrying a lot of load and we are going to walk on the slabs. So we generally like to support the slab and the beam. Slab will need only one support at the center, but beam, because everything is on the beam, there's no composite action. We like to provide few supports. Then, so we have the self weight of the beam. Then we are going to place slats on the beam. Then you are going to have this in situ concrete. So because we are we have the beam on props, we can say it's also uh, we are going to release the props only after the composite action is 50. So we can say this 90 millimeter. So we have the self weight of the beam as. 0.175 multiplied by 0.2 multiplied by 25 and it comes to 0.175 multiplied by 0.2 multiplied by 25. You can see it's a very small load, 0.875 kilonewtons per meter. Then we have to consider self weight of the slab. The slab. 0 0.09 into 25. Two point two five kilonewtons per meter square. Then we know the slab side two meter interval. So the self weight of slabs is 2.25 into 2.0 meter width so multiplied by 2 gives us 4.5 kilo kilo newtons per these are all real loads then we are allow for finishes and i told you now this gives a very good opportunity because we are casting a thin, we have precast the slabs, we have placed it on the beam. What we are placing is only 45 millimeters of screen. So, what we can do is we can level it very well because, because you know, the thickness is low. What you find is you can level it well. And also, there are marble chips. 
available in the market for about 100 rupees 100 rupees per kilogram so you can drop the marble chips and using the float you can spread the marble chips and uh, give it a good finish because if you are if you are if you cut this surface then you will get a very nice terrazzo finish so what you do is you mix marble chips with uh, metal chips what you call uh, 6 to 8 millimeter aggregate that's a chip that we use uh, to uh, spread down bitumen uh, when you do uh, chip sealing so you can use these small chips and then marble chips and even uh, broken we can say shattered windscreen so that's a glass piece that's a glass we are those shatter to a certain shape so it's not a sharp edges it's a certain shape so you can use all those uh, different materials and make it level and uh, which will allow you to cut the surface subsequently or on the other hand you can go for do the surface again perfectly and do the tiling on it if you need uh, to remove the debris dirt that accumulates on the surface later you can use a terrazzo cutter and cut it slightly and then lay the tiles so the tiles will be laid we can allow about 15 millimeters for that so 0 0.015 multiplied by 25 will give you a value like 0 0.015 multiplied by 25 is uh, 0 0.375 kilonewtons per meter squared, which means if you allow 0.5 kilonewtons per meter squared for finishers, it is sufficient. On the other hand, if you are going to have a leveling street of 25 millimeters and tiling with 15, this 20 milli, 25 millimeters at a density of 20 kilonewtons per meter cubed can give 0.5 and uh, this gives 0.375 the addition will be 0.875 kilonewtons per meter squared so you have to allow finisher for finishers 1.0 kilonewtons per meter so you can see we are going to gain a small advantage here with uh, 0 0.5 uh, kilonewtons per meter squared uh, removed from the weight of finishes. So that's a small advantage. So then we have to look at the live loads. So if you look at the live loads, we can we'll try two scenarios, three scenarios. So live loads. Uh, will be 2 kilonewtons per meter squared which is, which is applicable everywhere in a house but in bedrooms you can reduce it up to 1.5 that is the house on the other hand uh, in an office building we, get, we need a minimum of 2.5 kilonewtons per meter squared plus 1.0 for lightweight partitions And then, if you are expecting a lecture hall, something similar to lecture hall, we need to 5 kilonewtons per meter squared at the live load. So let's uh, calculate the numbers and see what happens. So the numbers are 1.35 GK plus 1.5 GK. So that's what we are looking for. Is that clear? Is that clear? Can somebody oh, okay. respond? Yeah? It's clear. Is that right? 
Yeah, participants, I think, better respond because yeah. uh, yes. Yes, it's yeah. not very yes. encouraging. Yes. 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 Can you all understand? Is it okay? Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. Right. So, if you look at GK, now if you look at the numbers, uh, self weight of the beam comes to uh, 0 0.5 as a beam kilonewtons per meter uh, weight of the slab comes to 4.5 kilonewtons per meter is a slab weight plus finishers it's 0.5 so we have to add multiplied by 2 we have to add 1 kilonewton per and qk comes to if it is a house we will use 2 because it's a safe number, safer number than 1.5, because uh, 2 is generally recommended for living areas and where the people can gather. Uh, value of 2 is recommended for houses, so better to go for 2. When you are designing a system, because even if you use it in 1.5, it's just a matter. So this addition becomes 1.35 multiplied by 5.5. Uh, 6.375 plus 1.5 times 2 and it comes to 1.35 times 6.375 plus 3 it comes to, uh, so this 2 also has to be multiplied by 2. So I made a small mistake. This uh, 2 kilometers per meter squared, because we have a width of 2, it has to be multiplied by 2, multiplied by 1.5 plus. So it comes to 14.6 kilonewtons per meter. Now you can see this is a lightly loaded beam. The beam is lightly loaded. Thinly supported beam, but it is light to load. Generally, when you are designing a beam, uh, minimum loads would be something like 40 to 50 kilonewtons per meter. The minimum load will come to around 40 to 50 kilonewtons per meter. But here we are getting only 14.6. So the bending moment is W S card 8 because it's simply supported. So, for, because I have considered that it is supported by a, with a number of supports until the composite action is restored. So, because of that reason, uh, we can say the whole system is, uh, is a more or less a UDL. So, 14.6 into 3.5 squared divided by 8 and that will be 14.6 multiplied by 3.5 3.5 divided by 8 so the bending moment is 22.35 kilonewton meters at the center and uh, this is a composite beam so we can find MOBD squared as 22.35 multiplied by 10 to the power 6 divided by breadth is uh, 1575 and depth is uh, 250, let's say 255, we got 258, so let's say 255, just allowing for some variations, 22.35. divided by 1575 divided by 255 divided by 255 0 0.218 so 100 days OBD is divided by 4 0 0.054 and AS, corresponding AS becomes multiplied by 
1575 multiplied by 255 divided by 100. So you will find the reinforcement requirement is 219 millimeters squared. So this is for a house. Span is 3.5 meters. So if you look at the situation, uh, we what we generally consider is that this beam is a very important member and it needs this type of reinforcement. So the requirement is 2H 12 bars over 3.5 meters square. So we have to cast it like this. Where we take it to the very end with 20 millimeter cover and uh, in the beam, we'll have two H8 here. And uh, generally, because this is, a, this is a very important member, and uh, because it's a beam, it attracts load. Sometimes what we do is we provide something like some additional two H8. So we can provide two H8 also. These are additional precaution because uh, whenever there is a beam, especially simply supported, it's good to have some extra reinforcement in the center location. So these 3.5 meters. So the bending moment diagram goes like this. So in this area, you can have something. So this length of this can be about 2.5 meters. Or even uh, three meter, you can just cut the bar into two, one eight millimeter bar, cut it into two and place it. So that would do uh, over a length of 3.5 meters. So that is all okay. Now we have to look at the shear requirement. Yes, this is the equation. So we have to see what is the shear force. The load on the beam is a uh, load on the beam is fourteen point six kilonewtons per meter. So the shear force diagram will be like this, and the shear force is WL by two. So just use 14.6 into 3.5 divided by 2 and that gives 14.6 multiplied by 3.5 divided by 2, 25.5 kilonewtons. So, and the, the angle theta is 22 degrees, why? It's lightly loaded. Lightly loaded. And uh, so, if a shear crack originates, it will originate like this. So, you can see this link is very effective. Again, shear. So there's no problem with the shear. So we can see how much reinforcement is needed. As for the Euro code, so we can I can share the screen now. So the equation is V R D S equals A S W over S. He said. F Y W D hot so that is the equation and uh, so what we do is 
uh, I, I theoretical I should check for VRD max, but because it's very lightly reinforced, very lightly loaded beam, I'm not going to check for that. <clears throat> and uh, then I'll stop sharing so that you can see the screen. And VRDS is 25.5 in Red to Power 3. And uh, now we have a problem. So generally when this system was uh, developed, we use uh, R6 links. But Eurocode says F Y K should be between 400 and 600 newtons per millimeter squared. So if you use R, it is 250 newtons per millimeter squared. So, because of that reason, uh, we cannot use R, we have to use uh, HH mass. HH mass. But if you, are, if you design this system for uh, BS code, then you can use uh, R6 links as well. But if you are designing for Euro code, then you have to go for HH mass. So H8 bar area is 50 square millimeters. So 50. So here you get 50. ASW over S. So ASW is 50. ASW is 50 divided by S. S. Is it is 0 0.9 times 255 multiplied by the strength of reinforcement that is 500. Divided by 1.15 YWD and cot theta multiplied by 1 over tan 22. 1 over tan 22. So S becomes S is equal to 25.5 multiplied by 1.15 multiplied by tan 22 divided by Multiply 10 to the power 3 divided by 50. Sorry, it's other way around. The S is equal to 50 multiplied by 0 0.9 multiplied by 255 multiplied by 500 divided by 25.5 into 10 to the power 3 multiplied by 1.15 into 10. So let's see what's the value that we get. So we get fifty into point nine multiplied by two two five. That's the two five five. 255. In defective depth multiplied by 500. 5737500 divided by 25500 divided by 1.15 divided by Tan twenty two equals four hundred. So once you get this, the answer is four hundred eighty four millimeters. So generally, you can see we can't go for that spacing because the overall depth of the beam is about two ninety. And generally, we say the the spacing should be 0.75 times effective depth. 0.258, so it is uh, 258 multiplied by 0 0.75, it gives 193, 0.5, so it may be okay if you provide the links at 175, 
10 to 2 10. you can provide links at 175 center to center uh, in this uh, area because uh, you know though we can go for 184 millimeters uh, we can't use that value because uh, for shear links generally we have a rule the maximum spacing of shear links should be only uh, 0.75 times the effective depth so when you look at all those rules you can see we need a little bit of links, but uh, the other reinforcement is minimum. So if you look at the overall reinforcement requirement uh, for this, so you are going to get two H12 plus you can give two H8 inside extra bars extra bars for added safety then we get so in each beam you get h8 two numbers here you get a h8 bar running here you get a cut piece At every 300 millimeter centers, onto the groove to just to make sure it's all locked up, and then you get 45 millimeters. Then again, you get 0.3 L, 600 millimeters of H8. So you can see, and also there'll be a lifting hook somewhere here. So we generally run a bar through that to make sure. And also one 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 bar at the center. So our distance about 0.9 meters, we run a bar, H8 bar. And here also we might run a H8 bar. Here also there's another lifting hook that we keep. So there will be another H8 bar. So the lifting hook is used to provide added continuity uh, because these uh, slabs are separated like this. The glue will make sure it's all filled up. It's confident. So every 500 millimeters, we'll have a H8 at 500 center to center. So you can see, there's a huge saving in steel because in a normal slab, 3.5 meter span, the usual detail will be Generally, it will be two-way spanning. So, you will find that you provide H10 at 250. This way also, you will provide H10 at 250. And then, you need top bars because it will be designed as a continuous slab. So, you need top bars running up to 0.3 years. And uh, you need a distance of about, uh, so this is uh, 3.5 meters this way. So the other way, at least 3 meters, so you need about 0.9 meters. On this side, you get. On this side, you will again get top bars. Here also, you get top bars. So every way, a lot of reinforcement. Whereas in this system, we minimize the amount of reinforcement. And uh, this generally runs about uh, 105 kilograms per meter cube. And this one generally, this one runs at about 80 kilograms per meter cube. But when you look at these two numbers, there's no very big difference. But this lab will be either 115 to 125 millimeters. Whereas this lab, has only a 90 millimeters generally. So you might say equivalent when you consider the size of the beam, you might say it's about 100 millimeters. But it is actually less, but it is allowed. So you can see there will be a significant saving in 
So if you get uh, 125 uh, multiplied by uh, 3 meters by 3.5 meters, uh, 4 meters is 4 meters. 4 meters by 3.5 meters multiplied by 0 0.125 multiplied by 105 minimum you will find the amount of reinforcement will be divided by meter cubes so that will be 4 by 3.5 by 0.125 multiplied by 105 kilograms. So you will need about 183 kilograms. So generally when you look at wastage and all that, you might need about 200 kilograms. Whereas in this system, you will need 3.5 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 0 0.1 multiplied by 80. You need only about 110 kilograms. Okay. So in this lab alone, 90 kilogram saving. And these days you need about 450 rupees to complete one kilogram of steel because the steel goes at a price of around uh, 350,000 liquid and uh, so 90 kilograms will need 90 into 450 so you can get a saving of about 40,000 rupees on the steel alone and then we will get a saving on concrete and we will get a saving on shuttering so you can get a you know, very significant saving, but uh, the saving actually is more for large structures or heavy loaded slabs. The saving can be uh, in the range of something like 30 to 40 percent. But when you consider the overall, sometimes it can be as high as 50 percent. Especially in the case of, uh, you know, there's a very special application for this. And that is uh, kind of uh, housing sector, especially in the case of self-help housing. Or the owner built houses. Because in this system, all these slab panels can be cast by the owner. Because it doesn't need any special technique. What you need to know is how to cut a bar, fix it, and cast something like that using a shutter, properly prepared shutter that can be repeatedly used. Sometimes it can be even a steel shutter. So, the owner can, if the owner is involved, then they can make a big saving. So the reason why we developed this system originally was for owner-built houses and self-help housing. But uh, only recently, this became economical, even for big projects, because this is lightweight. It allow avoiding leveling street. It allows soffit finish with a thin plaster, thin uh, coat like Maco. Super plast, plaster, so you can finish it, finish the suffix, and it doesn't need foam work, false work, in a big scale, only a 
some form of false work that can be repeatedly used. Then, so when you consider all these savings, even for multi story buildings, it can become a saving. Provided you are willing to take the little challenge at the site where the amount of site work will be very different to the traditional construction where the site work will involve precasting. So it needs precasting. Because we have to precast the beams, the slabs. And if you are in a big project where there's a tower crane available, you can precast the beams as well. And then, uh, you know, it's a matter of fixing them with some temporary supports that, that you can easily uh, do by having uh, GI pipes and uh, acrojacks. So the moment you have those, you can easily uh, provide, repeatedly use them in the project. So when you look at all those advantages, you are going to gain a significant saving by using this particular SAP system and one of the biggest savings will come over in the leveling speed because uh, leveling speeds are expensive because they generally can run up to about 25 millimeters and they need a lot of sand and cement and sand is very expensive. So that's one item that can bring a big saving and also you have to pay for labor. In this system you can avoid all that expenditure. So you can see uh, the reinforcement requirement is very low and uh, we can easily design the beam as well. The slab design I have shown earlier but today I have shown you how to design a beam. Now let's see what is the beauty of this system when it comes to uh, large slabs. Now let's say we are going to do the uh, slab on the car park and we are going to have two beams. The car park is six meters by six meters. It's a large two uh, car park, uh, car, a garage for or car parking space for uh, two cars. So let's see, or even a tall building, uh, this might be the case, you need large fans like this. So what happens? What happens is still the span has increased to 6 meters. And uh, let's say it's uh, used as an office building. So if you look at the loading, the upper floor is uh, still it's a house. So if it is a house, the load is uh, 14.6 kilonewtons per meter and uh, we might need a slightly bigger beam so we might need a beam of 300 or 350 meter giving an overall thickness of 140 millimeters giving an effective depth D of 408 millimeter. So let's say D is 400. So the width of the flange will be 0 0.2 times 6000 on one side. So it comes to 1.2 plus point. 1 point, point 0.175 plus 1.2. On the other hand, uh, the other equation gives point, uh, 2 into 2000 plus point 0.1 into 6000, 600 plus 400,000. So 
this will be less so it will be 1000 plus 175 plus 1000 2075 but it cannot be 2075 because we have a maximum width of 2000 so the width of the flange beam will be width of the flange of the flange beam will be 2000 millimeters uh, the bending moment will be 14.6 into 6 squared divided by 8, which comes to 14.6 multiplied by 36 divided by 8. 65.7 kilonewton meters. Uh, so it comes to 14.6 multiplied by 36 divided by 8. Yeah, 65.7. MOBD squared is 65.7 into 10 to the power 6 divided by breadth 1, 2000. Divided by 400 yard. So that is 65.7 divided by 2000. Divided by 400. Divided by 400. So 100 days or BD of. 2.0 giving 2.5 multiplied by 2000 multiplied by 4. So it's 0.5 multiplied by 2000 multiplied by 4. Sixty-five points, fourteen point six. Sixty-five seven. Divided by two thousand. Divided by four hundred. Divided by four hundred. 0.2, so it's 0 0.2. 0 0.2 divided by 4, 0.05 multiplied by 2000 multiplied by 4. 410 millimeters. So it comes to about two numbers of 16 bars plus two numbers of 8 millimeter. So it will come to a value like 2H16 is marginally sufficient. As a precaution, we can provide 2H8 as well. So, for six meter span, now you can see we have we have increased from three point five to six. The depth of the beam was two hundred. Now it has become three fifty. One hundred fifty millimeter increase. There is no increase any increase in the reinforcement in the slab. There is no increase in the this reinforcement. So the average thickness of the slab still remains 100 millimeter, whereas uh, the typical slab will be 175 millimeters, and uh, the concrete volume will be 6 into 6 into 0.175. So 
So the concrete volume will be 6 multiplied by 6 multiplied by 0.175, which come to 16.3 meter cubes. Whereas in the, in the slab system, it will be 6 multiplied by 6 multiplied by 0.1. So it will be 3.6 meter cubes of concrete. So it needs less concrete. It needs 6.3 into 105. So this will be around 110 because it needs a little more in extra reinforcement. So it will be like 6.3 into 100. 630 kilograms of reinforcement. In this system, it goes as 3.6 into 80. 288 kilograms, so 300 kilograms. And no foam work. So the concrete will be something like 35,000 rupees per meter cube with placing and all that. So concrete will cost 6.3 into 35,000, including labor. 220,500. Steel will cost 650 into 450. 292,500. Addition will be 220,500. 513 thousand without formwork. On the other side you get 3.6 into 35,000 plus 300 into 450 216,000 and that all is less formwork. You can see the saving is more than 50%. So that's why we say this is an ideal system for tall buildings because it can carry big loads. So even if you go for a auditorium with six meter span, the live load will be the 1.35 GK plus 1.5 QK will be the earlier figure is close to the earlier figure we calculated was uh, beam of about 1 and slab of 4.5 plus 1 for finishers multiplied by 1.35. And let's say we have designed it for crowd loading. into two so it comes to three four point five five point five six point five multiplied by one point three five plus one point five multiplied by ten the load is twenty three point seven seven five over six meters This twenty three point seven seven five. W is twenty three point seven seven five multiplied by thirty six divided by eight comes to twenty three point seven seven. The number is in the body guard divided by eight. Oh, Mahansi, I want to talk to you about the height. So let's say we are use we are using a because it's it's little more. So let's say we have gone for four hundred millimeter beams.
muted so you will find so we did that this 106 divided by again 2000 divided by 450 squared so it gives 106 divided by 2000 divided by 450 divided by 450 point 262 divided by 4 so it gives 588 mm squared that you can easily satisfy by using 2h16 and 2h12 so you can see the increase in the reinforcement when we change from uh, 2.0 kilonewtons per meter squared to 5 kilonewtons per meter squared is only adding instead of 2h8 you might add 2h12 so that is the only increase in reinforcement so that is one of the great things about this particular lightweight slab system so in this slab system although we developed it originally at uh, morotua uh, as a phd project in 1996 to 1999 for self help housing and also load bearing cement stabilized blocks because they needed a lesser weight for the slab system and also loads been transferred in all directions what we found was during the 20 22 23 crisis we saw steel prices that remained around 125000 rupees a ton going up to 350000 a ton and concrete cost also increasing by about 50% 150% becoming 100% 50% of the price that remained and also formwork cost going up because the labor cost has gone up what we found was labor cost used to be something like 2500 now it has gone up to about 4500 to 3000 so it has gone up now can be as high as 5000 so what we found was <laughs> the uh, light weight slab system can give a very significant saving maybe from our 30% up to 50% for large spans and these for small spans but last spans means you need something like a uh, tall buildings and if you carefully plan you can get a 50% saving on the cost of slab and you know in a tall building the biggest cost is the cost of the slab but you might ask the question how about the rigid diaphragm because in a tall building we assume the slab is uh, rigid slab is rigid but here what we see is we lock everything with the reinforcement so once it is all locked and made continuous this all this becomes a 90, 90 mm composite slab
So the rigid diaphragm is available. Is available and in tall buildings, what you can do is you can precast even the beams that goes in like this. And what you do is we keep more cover and we'll add, we'll add some additional reinforcement here so that these precast beam also can rest. In situ cost large. So what you do is you have to go for a two-stage process where you cast up to this level, cast up to that level, place the beams, and then fill the remaining part of the pump. So and after that, all these slabs can be placed. And the street concrete can be laid. So all the there can be continuity at all these places. So here also you can have some continuity. And we can make the whole system continuous. So the beauty is the cost saving. And the other one is lightweight. Means you can save on the foundation. And also because it's lightweight, you can save on column reinforcement. Because it's lightweight, it absorbs less earthquake induced forces. Less earthquake induced forces by the mini. So there are so many different advantages of going for this system, which was originally designed, uh, developed as a cost-effective slab system for uh, the kind of situation where the owner builds his own house. So, uh, now you can see there are many advantages of this system which can be applied for houses, apartment buildings, or even multi story large scale projects. But uh, the original intention was not that. What happened was during the last crisis, where we saw huge increase in uh, costs. We have actually uh, extended this system to four uh, large spans. And also we have developed it so that now we can do the structural design of this system by using Europe. So uh, any questions? Engineer Kamala. There is one question, Professor. Yeah. What about the fire performance of this thin, lightweight oh, beam? No, no, actually, the, structural yeah. element. Yes. There are a few questions. Yeah. Fire wise, you know, if you look at the fire requirement according to Eurocodes, uh, the reason why, uh, you know, now these, are, these beams are designed as simply supported. For simply supported rib beams, the fire requirement is 160 millimeters. If you have a width of 160 millimeters and with a cover of 20 millimeters, you can uh, satisfy the fire requirement. You can check it or check with the fire code, and the fire requirement is a minimum width of 160 millimeters. But uh, if you are going to make the beam continuous, then even 150 millimeter is sufficient. So whether you can make it continuous or not depends on the arrangement of the beams. So generally we design it as a simply supported beam. But if you have a large building where the beams are aligned, where the, 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 the main beams are large, like this kind of situation, 
where you have a large beam and uh, you keep a big bigger cover and then you fix reinforcement outside so the beams come here and then when you complete this as 90 millimeters you are going to have continuous reinforcement that will make this beam continuous then you can even go for 100 But if it is not, if simply supported, the minimum needed for fire requirement is 160 millimeters, and it can give uh, over 30 minutes of fire resistance. But uh, actually, uh, you know, the chances of this type of system coming down is very low because uh, because you can see uh, the whole system cannot collapse because uh, this is constructed. As segment, so if anything is going to collapse, the chances are it could be a local failure than a whole thing collapsing at once. Because uh, the loads are transferred in all different directions, so the whole slab cannot collapse at, at once. But um, you can easily provide more than 30 minutes of fire resistance for the slabs, which is uh, for slabs, it is, uh, if you can go for 30 minutes, it would be quite sufficient because we are looking at the chances for evacuation. So, if it is a fire occurs, then you can easily get the people removed. But the chances are these type of systems will not collapse easily because the uh, if you look at the core fire requirements, they are mainly for the situations where the shear links are not available. But uh, because the rip slab systems, uh, they you don't get shear reinforcement. But in this case. You get shear reinforcement, so the chances of a failure happening suddenly is very remote in this type of system. And uh, firewise, there's no problem. So you can check the fire code. I have checked it, and the minimum width needed is 160 millimeters. We are providing 175. And if you want, you can keep increase the cover slightly. Then it will be it can give better more fire resistance. Is that okay? Yeah, a few more questions, Professor. Is yeah. this system resilient to earthquakes in terms of universality in application in earthquake, earthquake prone areas in the world? Yeah. Uh, this has been intend, invented as a part of a PhD project. Yeah. Sorry, uh, so basically, basically, you know, if you consider the earthquakes, Earthquakes will affect the columns and beams, not the slabs. So these are these are slabs that is made continuous by using 45 millimeter thick uh, concrete where the reinforcement is embedded. So the chances of anything going wrong in this system in an earthquake is very low. But on the other hand, uh, one of the main reasons for absorbing the earthquake load by a building is the self-weight so if you look at uh, tall buildings the maximum the maximum contribution for self-weight comes from each slab now here you can see if you can if you can when you, if large buildings have large slabs like six meter seven meter eight meter if you go for uh, this system then you are you are using only about 50 percent of the weight that means the earthquake load absorbed by the building that will finally affect the frame will be about 50 percent of the equivalent load in a traditional building so if the earthquake load is 50 percent less then the chances of survival will be much higher anyway if you have a building more than 10 floors the chances of uh, building out 10 floor more than 10 floors being affected by an earthquake is very remote Unless it's clear, it's located in a major earthquake zone where you can get earthquakes like nine on richer scale. Anything like six to seven will not affect a tall building. So that is the answer for tall building scenario. What is the other question? Question three, your... with, with regard to yeah, with regard to in situ casting, what to what extent quality control effect on the structural performance in comparison to conventional slab beam design? Yeah, actually, actually this, this is mainly precasting. So you can precast the slabs definitely. 
and if you have a lifting equipment that can if you have a tower crane you can precast the beams as well so at the site what you precast you have to cast is only the main beams only the main beams so you will precast you cast only the main beams columns so you can have usual called qaqc for that but for any precasting operation it's very easy to uh, set up the pre qaqc because you are repeating the same same process over and over again so it's very easy to ensure qaqc if you are doing precasting right and uh, yeah so so qaqc wise there's there's no additional uh, problem actually this this will be easier to do the qaqc work. but and then there was another question on how do you uh, Accommodate the bathroom. So, if it is a house, generally what we do is uh, the this will be uh, this can be used. The blocks blocks can be used. So, the height of a block is two hundred millimeters. So, what we can do is, if you are going to support the slab bed this level, you need a bathroom. Then you support the bathroom slab bed one block below. So, you can get a drop of two hundred millimeters. Can easily get a drop of 200 millimeter by uh, supporting the uh, bathroom slab one block below. So that can be easily achieved. And uh, then you will fill this up with uh, concrete and then support the slab on the other side on uh, on that concrete. So this can be easily done. Dropping for bathrooms is not a problem at all. It's very easy. Next question is, Professor, how the beams and slabs merge into walls? The same Sorry? thing. How the beams and slabs merge into walls? How the beams and slabs? Oh, yes. So, uh, if you have slabs, now let's say, let's take a scenario for a house. And I told you the last time that, you know, any width, all width of 150 or 200 can be used. And the ideal is uh, use high strength material. So high strength material comes with hollow blocks, hollow concrete blocks. So this slab can be directly supported on the block wall. And it can be made continuous as well. So there's no problem of supporting it. So on the other hand, you have the block work. And you have a beam coming onto the blocks. So this part of the block can be filled with concrete. And place the beam on concrete. So you get the other blocks coming like that. So when you are doing a beam, so what we generally do is we'll go for either 200 millimeter beams or 400 millimeter beams. So that is easy because 400 millimeter is the height of two blocks. 200 is one block. So you can easily do the adjustments. So this is something uh, that is done just to make the life easy, but doesn't mean that. Uh, you can you can't use 300 300 also can be used but sometimes you find at the site you need a little bit of adjustment so the easiest is go for 200 millimeters as uh, by adjusting the reinforcement if not go for 400 by adjusting the reinforcement if you are using block the reason is the uh, height of a block is 200 millimeters so you can go in the intervals of uh, 200 millimeters or uh, you have to, have to go in the intervals of 200 millimeters. If you go in the intervals of 100 millimeters, you need little adjustment at the site because uh, the height of the beam will not fit with the height of the blocks. Have I answered the question? Yes, yes sir. sir. Also. Yes, sir. Is it okay? Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, I think he is okay. Yeah. Any method to consider while casting RC beams in two stages? I think he is uh, concerned about the core joint. 
Ah, yeah, no, 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 no problem. Because when you are cast in the core, ah, this core form, that is not a problem at all. Because uh, here we have the links. So if you have a, if you stop it here, then then you if you have any concern, just uh, increase the number of links, uh, you know, reduce the link space. Link space. Where the shear is shear is large, so so there's no problem of forming a joint like this. For example, when you are doing a large uh, transfer plate, we cast the beam uh, say thousand five hundred deep. We cast three hundred fifty millimeters early, so that the rest of rest thousand thousand one hundred fifty millimeter weight can be taken by the three hundred fifty millimeter thick slab. So we do that type of thing. So basically. Uh, when you consider that situation, uh, there's no problem. The only thing is you have to roughen this surface so that the friction will be high enough. And uh, there's no uh, cold joint, but it will be a actual joint where the beams are cast in two states. So it will not be a cold, cold joint. It will be a... So you cast up to this level, place these beams, it will take one day to finish all that work because this concrete has to harden slightly before, sufficiently before you place these beams. Even if you are having some reinforcement to support the beams, still it has to be like that. And even these beams will have the reinforcement coming to the very end and bent upwards. So, so there's no cover problem. So this, this reinforcement will rest on the reinforcement. Yeah, the uh, next question is, Professor, the same thing like, what is the maximum cover preferred for reinforcements? Uh, yeah, actually... Uh, yeah, what you are explaining, that's why I read it out. Yeah, so basically... Uh, yeah, so basically... Uh, somebody is asking about the maximum cover. Yeah, what is the maximum cover preferred for reinforcements? No, actually... Uh, the cover requirement is 35 millimeters for euro. Right? Anything more is bonus. Right? But 50 mm, 35 millimeter with if you properly cure can assure anything up to 100 years. Because the actual cover requirement is 25 millimeters and we are keeping 10 millimeter for the tolerances. So if you do accurate casting, 35 millimeter can cover can easily assure 100 years provided you have cured the concrete if you have cured the concrete for seven days the lifespan will be over 100 years because euro code has this uh, extra allowance for tolerance so if you keep the keep the actual cover and make accurate construction then there will be the cover will be over 35 millimeters for the main reinforcement so uh, the lifespan will be more than 100 years so no need to go for more than 35 millimeters because the actual cover requirement is 25 and the remaining 10 comes with the construction tolerance. So if you, if you keep 35, that would be an ideal cover. Is that correct? Is that okay? I have one more question, Professor. Is there yeah. a method to batch higher slump about 200 millimeter concrete yeah. about C30 at site? At, at site, site. Mm. yeah, it, it, it will all depend on the admixture. So if you go for a good admixture, and uh, the next thing is fly ash, because this is what happens. If you go for a good admixture, that will allow you to go for something like 150 millimeter kilograms per meter cube. You add about 160 kilograms per meter cube, then you get high sum. Then fry ash, what we have is type F, fry ash, has a finer material. It has a lubricating effect. It's called ball bearing effect.
and that will allow you to compact well and it also can give a slightly higher sound. So the technique is go for a good admixture that will that needs only 150 kilograms per meter cube. Then use about 160 kilograms per meter cube. The moment you do that, you can uh, get a very high slump at the site. Is that okay? Yeah, that's all, Professor. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll wind up with a brief uh, thanking for everyone. Yeah. So I take the pride of delivering thanking not also today because uh, I'm the one who is here. So thank you, Professor, for your thank you. exaggerated and the, I mean, the very impressive lecture and as usual. So thank you so much taking your time and getting all the effort yeah. to deliver a very, very wonderful lecture. So... Also, I actually I have to thank the secretariat and organizing event and this uh, giving all the technical support and the IT team, their assistance and fl sending flyers off on time, even with the short notice. So thanks everyone, and uh, behalf of the uh, civil engineer section committee and the behalf of the chairman uh, engineer Mangal Silva, I thank you everyone. Who participated here and given your wonderful contribution, sharing the knowledge. So thanks everyone. Have Thank a great you. day. Good night. Good night.